Hi, and welcome to the presentation of the paper Sponge-Based Authenticated Encryption, Security Against Quantum Attackers. My name is Patrick Struck. I'm from University of Regensburg, and this is joint work together with my co-author Christian Jansson from the Technical University of Darmstadt. Let me start with a very quick motivation of this work. So in cryptography, we have the two categories of, on the one hand, asymmetric cryptography, on the other hand, symmetric cryptography. And for asymmetric cryptography, we know that Shaw's algorithm breaks many of the underlying hardness assumptions, like factoring integers, as well as solving discrete logarithms, which is the reason for this conference to develop post-quantum cryptography, so primitives based on lattices, codes, multivariate equations, hash functions or isogenies. The other thing we have is Grover's algorithm, which provides a speed up for finding collisions. And here we usually double the output lengths of hash functions to cope with that. So the thing for symmetric cryptography is, first, we don't have these underlying hardness assumptions, so we cannot apply Shor's algorithm here. But what we can do is we can use Grover's algorithm to get a speed up for brute forcing the key space. And the usual way to deal with that is to say, well, we just double the key lengths of the symmetric primitives and then we're fine. But recently, in this year Eurocrypt, it was shown that actually better attacks are possible. So what we actually need also for symmetric cryptography is to analyze the security against quantum attackers, which also defines the scope of this work. And in this work, we analyze uh, sponge-based authenticated encryption schemes and more precisely, we analyze the scheme SLAY, which stands for Sponge-Based Leakage Resilient Authenticated Encryption. And that's a work that we developed in 2019. So here you can see in general how sponge constructions look like. So you have some function or permutation row mapping from n bits to n bits. And then in the first part, which is the absorbing phase, we can, X, uh, we can absorb an input here x1 to xl by xoring it r bit at a time to the first n r bits of the n bit state and then applying the, the function or permutation row. And afterwards in the squeezing phase, we can generate an output by always taking the first r bits of the state and then applying row again. So this sponge-based encryption scheme SLAY is designed to resist side channel leakage. And its design is also closely related and inspired by another sponge-based scheme ISAP from 2017 which is currently a finalist in the NIST standardization process of lightweight cryptography. And the thing for SLAY and one of the important differences to ISAP is that SLAY is based on T sponges. So in our case, this function row is a random function, whereas for ISAP, uh, this is a random permutation. But SLAY, in more general, we can view this as a more abstract construction, which is the FGH F prime construction. And this construction follows the encrypt then MAC paradigm. So we have an encryption scheme and we have a message authentication code. And here we can decompose the encryption into a fixed input length function f and a pseudorandom generator g and the message authentication code into a vector hash function h and a fixed input length function f prime. And together with the inputs and outputs, this is how the whole construction looks like. So for the inputs, we have a message, a nonce, and associated data. And the scheme will proceed by taking the nonce, feeding it into the function f in order to derive a pseudorandom output. And this will be used as the seed for the pseudorandom generator g. And the output of g will be the key stream that is then xort with the message m in order to derive the ciphertext c. Subsequently, the ciphertext along with the nonce and the associated data are input into the hash function h and the hash, uh, the hash value uh, of h will then be fed into the function f prime in order to derive the tag t. And when we look at the concrete sponge-based construction, here you can see the sponge-based encryption scheme SLNC. So we start with the, with the key as the initial state together with some IV. And then first we absorb the nonce using the, the classical sponge construction. And this is the, the first part here that corresponds then to this function f, or in this case we call it slfunc. Then in the second part, this in the squeezing phase, 
we always output r bits at a time and then XOR the message to it in order to uh, derive the cipher text. And here the second part, this uh, squeezing phase minus the, the XORing step corresponds to this uh, pseudorandom generator G or the concrete sponge based pseudorandom generator SPRG. Similar here for the message authentication code SRMAC. So in the first part, we set up the initial state with the nonce n and some iv. We then absorb the associated data r bit at a time from a1 up to au, following by followed by absorbing the ciphertext c1 to cv. And here to demarcate the the swap from absorbing the associated data to the ciphertext, we also have this extra bit flip in the in the lower part when the first ciphertext block is absorbed. This part corresponds to the sponge-based vector hash function, svhash. The output of it, which is the hash function, this is then input into slfunk again. So this is the same as on the previous slide. So we uh, set up the initial state with the key and some IV, and then we absorb the, the hash value until the final output is then the tag, t. So now we are interested in the security of Slay against quantum attackers. So on the one hand, we look into the post-quantum or Q1 security. So we have a quantum adversary and this quantum adversary gets access to so-called offline oracles and online oracles. And in this setting, the offline oracles, since the adversary has quantum computing power, we grant quantum access. Whereas for the online oracles, we grant the adversary only classical access. And in case of Slay, the offline oracles will be this transformation law underlying the sponge construction, whereas the online oracles are the oracles that are provided by the challenger. For instance, everything that involves the key. On the other hand, we also consider the quantum or Q2 security of Slay. And here again, the adversary gets access to offline and online oracles. For the offline oracles, the adversary still gets quantum access. Whereas now also for the online oracles, the adversary gets quantum access. The thing for this part here, we only consider the underlying encryption scheme SLENC. And in particular there, we have to uh, consider several security notions. So the int QCPA by Bonnet and Zentry, as well as the Q int QCPA security notions by Gajadoni, Hösing and Schaffner, as well as Musayebi and Schack. So let's start with the post-quantum security of Slay. So in prior work was shown that the leakage resilient security of Slay reduces to the leakage resilient security of the underlying components. So roughly we get this picture. So on top we have the security of Slay, which can be decomposed into the security or which follows from the security of SLENC and SLMEC. And in turn, the security of SLNC follows from the security of the underlying function f and the pseudorandom generator g, whereas the security for SLMAC follows from the uh, security of the hash function h and the function f prime. So we show that the same also holds in the post quantum setting, and this mainly follows by ignoring the leakage part from the previous proofs, and you get more or less the same, same reductions here. So what we then need to show is security of these underlying components. So we have on the one hand, we have the, the pseudorandom function and here we mainly need the one way to hiding lemma. And here's the security bound we achieve. Then the second part is the pseudorandom generator for which we can then also leverage the one way to hiding lemma to get this bound. And for the post quantum security of the hash function, we can uh, rely on the work by Tchaikovsky, Kurt Brunderink, Hülsing, Schaffner and Unruh, where we got this uh, more complex bound here. Now coming to the quantum or Q2 security of Slay. As mentioned earlier, we have several security notions we need to consider here. And one thing here for all these notions, what they have in common is that they assume the randomness to be classical. And in our case, while none of these notions actually consider non-spaced encryption schemes, in our case, the randomness will be the nonce. So we decided for the following, we allow the adversary to choose a nonce, 
but then the challenger will simply measure the nonce in order to ensure that it's classical, and then it will reject the query if a nonce repeats. And this, if this equals the setting for classical nonce that the adversary would be nonce respecting, what we opt for. So let's start with InQCPA security, which stands for ciphertext indistinguishability under quantum chosen plain text attacks. So this is the security notion developed by Bonnet and Zendry in 2013. And here the adversary gets two encryption oracles, a CPA oracle and the int oracle. This is the CPA oracle reflecting a learning oracle and the int oracle reflecting the challenge oracle for the adversary. And in this notion, the adversary is granted quantum access to the CPA oracle while still restricted to classical access to the int oracle. So for the C CPA oracle, the adversary can query some message and some ciphertext register. And in return, the oracle will encrypt the message and XOR it to the ciphertext register. Whereas for the int oracle, the adversary will submit two classical messages, m0 and m1, and will receive the encryption of the message mb for some bit b that the adversary tries to find. Now if we apply the int qcpa security for SL, the encryption scheme slenc, the adversary gets these three oracles. So we have the random oracle row for the transformation underlying the sponge construction, and the learning CPA oracle and the challenge int oracle. For the random oracle, the adversary can submit an input and an output register here x and y, and the evaluation of the function will be XORed into the output register. For the CPA oracle, the adversary can submit a nonce, a message, and a ciphertext register. The oracle will then measure the, the nonce register and return the state which XORs the encryption of the message into the ciphertext register. And for the int oracle, the adversary can submit two classical messages, m0 and m1, and in return receives the encryption of the message mb for some secret bit b. The crucial thing here, the only difference compared to the classic no, to the post-quantum in CPA security of SLNC is here on this CPA oracle. While in int QCPA, the adversary can submit these queries in superposition. For the post-quantum setting, these queries were restricted to be classical. In order to show security here, we can rely on the fact that SLNC is a stream cipher. Meaning, so the encryption under a particular key and a nonce in the message effectively is the XOR of some key stream with the message. So we can write this key stream as some function f apply to the key and the nonce. And Anand, Tagi, Tabi, and Unruh in 2016 showed that post-quantum or Q1 security implies int QCPA security or Q2 security for these stream ciphers. And the core part is that the key stream only depends on the key and the nonce, and in both of these are classical values. So what we can do, assume we have some int QCPA adversary, then we want to construct an int CPA adversary out of it. So when our int QCPA adversary submits a quantum query to its CPA oracle, so consisting of a nonce, a message, and a ciphertext register, the int CPA adversary can just measure the, cipher, uh, measure the nonce register, and then it classically invokes its own CPA oracle on the nonce, and the all zero message. And since the, the encryption scheme is a string cipher, the all zero message means that the, the CPA oracle will return just this key stream f of kn. And with knowledge of f of kn, the int CPA adversary can then answer the query by the int QCPA adversary by just XORing this value and the message register into the cipher text register. So this means from the post-quantum security of the scheme, we also achieve int QCPA security of SLNC. Now coming to the other two notions, so Q int QCPA security notions, uh, here standing for quantum indistinguishability under quantum chosen plain text attacks. 
So as mentioned earlier, we have two security notions here. One is by Gayadoni, Hülsing and Schaffner, the other one by Musa, Yibi and Czech. So for the first notion, the adversary is allowed to submit two messages, M0 and M1, to the int oracle. And in return, it will receive, so the oracle will discard one of the registers and then transforms the other one into the encryption of the, uh, of the message. And here, there are more details into that this is actually possible, but for sake of simplicity, we ignore this part here. And for the notion by Musa, Yebi and Shek, the adversary will only submit one message along with the ciphertext register here, M and C. And in return, the oracle will XOR the encryption of the message into the second register. And based on some secret bit, it will either just encrypt the message and XOR it, XOR it into the ciphertext register, or it will first apply a permutation to the message and then encrypts the permuted message into the ciphertext register. So starting with the notion by Gaia Doni et al, we can show that SLNC is insecure also due to being a stream cipher. And there's in fact a generic attack that Gaia Doni, Hülsing and Schaffner provide, which is based on a term that they coined as quasi-length preserving encryption. And the idea here is as follows. So we have our adversary, and which has access to this int oracle. And the adversary will submit the two messages. One is the plus state, so an equal superposition of all the messages. And the other is just the all zero message. The oracle will return some ciphertext register C. So if the, now in the case, if the bit B is zero, so meaning the left message will be encrypted, then the ciphertext register C that the adversary receives will also be the plus state. And here this, this follows from the stream cipher so that this XOing the stream cipher to the plus state acts as a permutation, but since all the, uh, the, all the amplitudes are set, permuting the amplitudes around will not change the state, so we will end up with a plus state in this case. If the bit B on the other hand is one, then this ciphertext register that the adversary receives will be cat R for some random value R. And these two states are distinguishable by applying Hadamard followed by a measurement. So in the case B equals zero, applying the Hadamard to the plus state will give the zero state. So measuring will return zero with probability one. Whereas for the other case, applying the Hadamard to this cat R will create an equal superposition with positive and negative amplitudes, but then measuring it will just return a random bit string. So the, the probability of uh, measuring this also to the all zero string will be two to the minus n. Going to the other security notion by Musa Yebin check, we also have that SLNC is insecure due to being a stream cipher. And here we can rely on, on an attack by proposed by Chevalier, Ebrahimi and Wu in 2020. So we have our adversary and this int oracle according to the notion by Musa Yebin check but as well the, the same for the notion by Chevalier, Ebrahimi and Wu. And here the adversary will submit the following state, which is basically taking a superposition over the all zero message and the all one message, and the ciphertext register will just be the all zero state. The oracle will then respond with the two registers. Let's call this cat phi and cat psi. Now we can also distinguish the two cases. So in the case, the, B bit, the bit B is equal to zero, meaning no, no permutation is applied. Then what one can show is that if you apply a Hadama to both cat phi and psi, and then measure the two registers, you will receive two values, x and y, which have the property that the parity of x equals the parity of y with probability one. On the other hand, if the bit B equals one, meaning that the oracle uh, applied some permutation to the message before encrypting it. Then you can show that applying a Hadama followed by a measurement to cat phi and cat psi also leads to two values x and y, but this time with the property that the parity of x equals the parity of y only with the probability one half. So this, the distinguishing attack will just make this query and afterwards just apply Hadama to phi and psi, measures it, and if the parity of the two values is the same, it will output zero as its guess, 
In the other case, it will output one, meaning it will always guess correctly if the bit B is zero and only have a probability one half of guessing incorrectly if the bit B was equal to one. So let me wrap up and conclude with open problems. So we analyzed the security of the sponge-based authenticated encryption scheme SLAY against quantum attackers. On the one hand, we showed post-quantum or Q1 security of the scheme, and we also analyzed the quantum or Q2 security of the underlying encryption scheme, where we showed that it achieves security according to the Bonnet's entry notion, while it does not achieve security according to the two stronger notions by Gallardoni et al., as well as Mosayibi and Czech. For open problems, so one thing that's interesting would be to extend the results to ISEP. The core problem here is that ISEP relies on, on T-sponges, whereas uh, SLAY relied on T-sponges, meaning now the adversary gets quantum access to this random permutation as well as its inverse, so we can no longer apply like things like the one way to hiding lemma. And the other thing, as mentioned initially, SLAY was developed as a scheme to resist side channel leakage. So another interesting question would be to simultaneously consider quantum adversaries that also get some side channel leakage and analyze how this affects their security then. This concludes my presentation. Thank you very much.